Hi, I'm Nazri. Hi, I'm Rahim. And we are physiotherapists from Adelope, Michigan. Okay, and today we'll be talking about exercise tolerance as part of this month's campaign, Service Your Heart. Is exercise tolerance? Okay, good question. So, exercise tolerance is the exercise capacity of an individual as measured by their ability to endure exercise and or the maximum workload achieved during the exercise period. Why is that? Okay, so it basically means that how much exercise you can do and how long you can last during your exercise. Interesting. Okay, just for your information, you can check your exercise tolerance by using what you call an exercise tolerance testing okay? or exercise uh, tolerance test or people call it stress test Okay So Nathan, do you know why good exercise tolerance is very important? Well, as far as I know, exercise tolerance can help in lower risk of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, dementia and Alzheimer's, stereotype of cancer and some complication of pregnancy. They also help in better sleeping, including improvements in insomnia and attractive sleep apnea, and improved cognition, including memory, attention, and processing. Very good. Also, did you know that it can also help to lessen your know, weight gain, obesity, and related chronic health conditions, better your bone health and balance, with less risk of injury from falls, fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety, and better quality of life and sense of overall well-being. So Rakim, can you explain a bit more about cardiovascular endurance? Okay, sure. Okay, so cardiovascular endurance is how efficient your heart works, okay? Uh, your blood vessels and the lungs to supply oxygen rich blood to working muscles during physical activity mostly in aerobic activity, like walking, running, cycling, or playing a sport for a prolonged period of time or for more than 90 seconds. So now what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. when you're doing exercise or sport, okay, so your muscle is demanding a lot of oxygen okay, in return for energy. So when they use up the energy and oxygen, it becomes carbon dioxide. Okay, so the carbon dioxide will be pumped to your lungs to change back to new oxygen which will be uh, pumped back, will, will come back into your heart so it will pump throughout your whole body to your muscles where it needs the oxygen okay? and the more you exercise, the longer period of exercise okay, the higher the demand for more oxygen so your heart has to keep up with the demand, it will pump faster and harder For excess tolerance or excess endurance, which could be because of certain conditions such as cardiovascular disease which could affect your heart or blood vessel or COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder which could affect your lungs okay. So, uh, what happens when you have this kind of condition is uh, you have difficulty doing your activities of daily living okay? mm. things like wearing a shirt, okay, you might find difficulty mm. okay? And also, um, you know, doing your work, okay, at work might find it difficult, uh, shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. And also, you participating in sports with your friends. Uh, you, find it e you find it easy for you to get tired, stay out of breath, and all these kind of things. Right? Okay. Raki. Yeah? Just now you got uh, mentioned about SI storage testing, right? Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us? Okay, sure. So, exercise tolerance test uh, assesses the heart under stress. Uh, there are two ways to perform this test uh, using a treadmill or using a bike. Okay, both methods make the heart work under, under an increasing workload. Okay, slowly increasing the workload and to see if there are any changes in the heart rate, the rhythm, uh, any increase in blood pressure, or if there's any symptoms that manifest. So why we do it? Mm. There are a number of reasons. Okay, it could be due to uh, you want to detect uh, any coronary artery disease in patients with chest pain. 
uh, and potential uh, symptom equivalence. Okay, you want to evaluate the anatomic and functional severity of uh, the chronic artery disease. Uh, you want to predict cardiovascular events and all cause death. You want to evaluate uh, physical capacity and effort tolerance. Evaluate exercise related symptoms. Assessment of chronotropic competence, arrhythmias, and response to implanted device therapy, and to assess the response to medical intervention. So, how they do this test mm. is they will first uh, have you relax, okay? They will take your resting heart rate, mm. where they will put uh, a few patches, you know, like 12 patches here, and connect it to something you call uh, ECG or electrocardiogram. Mm. To check your rhythm of your heart and also your, the rate of your heart rate. Okay. Mm. Uh, and then they will tell you to either go to treadmill uh, uh, exercise or to do exercise using the bike. Okay. You know, follow a program where, where it will put stress under your heart. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then followed by a cool down period. So uh, throughout this whole exercise program, they will monitor your heart rate, your heart rhythm. Then when you are finished with the program, they will uh, see your recovery uh, of your heart rate. How fast uh, does it take your heart to recover from, you know, under stress to basically your resting heart rate. Speaking of heart disease, do you know that ischemic heart disease remain the main cause of death among Malaysians mm -hmm. in 2019, said Department of Statistics in Malaysia. Mm. There were about 174,000 deaths recorded in 2019. Ischemic heart disease was also the principal cause of death involving all three major ethnic groups, Bonomutra, Chinese, and Indians. Hmm. Interesting statistics. Okay, I'm sure the viewers want to know uh, what sort of exercise they can do to improve their exercise tolerance. Okay, but before we uh, let you know, uh, we will be following uh, the American Heart Association standards. So if you don't know what American Heart Association is, okay, the American Heart Association (AHA) is a non-profit organization in the United States that funds cardiovascular medical research, educates consumers on healthy living, and fosters appropriate cardiac care in an effort to reduce disability and deaths caused by cardiovascular disease and stroke. So. Before we even start exercising, you need mm. to follow some precautions of exercise. Okay? Okay. You want to uh, wear comfortable clothing and well padded shoes that can protect the heel and arches of the feet. You want to put on appropriate gear for the activity, for example, helmets and protective pad for cycling. Mm. You want to make sure you always warm up before doing exercise and cool down right after so you can prevent or lower the risk of strains and sprains. Mm. Okay, those are enough. Uh, and then you want to take appropriate breaks during the activity. Okay, make sure you have enough break. Uh, do not exercise with an empty stomach. You should eat something light. But mm -hmm. if you if you have a full meal, okay, you, you should not exercise immediately, as it will also affect your digestion of your stomach. Oh. Okay. Then you want to replenish. Ensure you replenish extra fluids uh, before, during, and after the physical activity especially for prolonged exercise like hiking. Uh, be aware of the weather and environmental conditions. You should avoid doing outdoor vigorous exercises in hot or humid weather so you prevent yourself from getting heat stroke. And lastly, you should listen to your body. Okay, Do not exercise when you feel unwell. Okay, if you feel dizzy, uh, shortness of breath, chest pain, nausea or vomiting, or muscle and joint pain during exercise, you should stop and you should seek medical advice as soon as possible. So to plan your exercise, you need to get at least of 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous aerobic activity or combined both. Prefer we spread throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And add moderate to high intensity muscle strengthening activity such as resistance or weights on at least two days per week. Okay. Spend less time sitting, even light intensity activity can offset the sun of the risk of being sedentary. Mm -hmm. Gain even more benefits by active at least 300 minutes 
or five hours per week. Okay. And lastly, increase amount and intensity gradually over time. Right. Okay. So, uh, when you're talking about moderate intensity aerobic activity, uh, exercises like brisk walking, so like fast walking, okay, so at least four kilometers per hour. That's your speed. So when you're on a treadmill, you set the setting to four, okay, uh, four or above, okay, not too fast. That's what I mean, okay. Uh, and then water aerobics. Uh, dancing, uh, like ballroom or social, uh, gardening, mm. tennis, uh, doubles, uh, or you biking with your you know, bicycle, uh, less than uh, slower than sixteen kilometers per hour. So for vigorous intensity aerobic activity, you can do hike up the hill with your heavy backpack, running, swimming laps. Arabic dancing, heavy yard work like continuous digging or hoeing, tennis singles, cycling 16 km per hour or faster, or jumping rope. So, we hope you uh, learned something valuable mm. uh, in this online help talk. Okay. If you have any questions, you can contact CareHub. Okay. And if you have any free time, if you have spare time, why not for you park residents? Uh, you can go down to the care hub and get your vital signs checked. Okay, you get your BMI checked. You know, monitor your health. Lah. Okay. Okay. And remember, mm -hmm. service your heart. Service your heart. Bye. Bye.